What's up guys, it's me Zero to my Kitsune and Manga Spotlights. Haven't done one of those in a while. Actually, I don't think I've ever done one. But I recently came across a very simple concept executed brilliantly and I had to share it. Thought Yelp. Ishuzoku Reviews is what we're covering today, also known as Interspecies Reviews, and despite the innocent title, much like another interspecies based story, has quite a bit of plot, but nothing outright explicit. Kinda. The series has two volumes right now, with only the first being translated, so there isn't much I can cover, but the premise of the entire series is perfectly set up in the first chapter. Our main character is Stunk, a human and quote unquote adventurer of the succubus districts. He's walking away from another successful adventure with some elves before running into his pal Zell, who the story describes as a pervy elf who immediately grills his pal over his most recent endeavor. But they're both perverts as the story describes, so what's the problem here? Age. This elven woman is 500 years old. And your point is? Now to our mortal eyes, all we see is a proud noble woman totally not destined for some sort of doujinshi style bad end. But to Zell, a fellow elf himself, all he sees is a thought old enough to be his mother. Compounding this even further is Zell's own recent conquest, appearing and... <laughs> Arguments ensue. The two bicker back and forth over this in a bar, with Zell explaining that the elf's aging mana is the issue. Wait, how does mana even... A don't ask questions. Anyways, Stunk soon feels enough is enough and decides to sell this in the manliest way possible. Voting. So he calls over a few friends from other races, while also outing them to the cute waitress that they visit the succubus districts, regularly, and demands that they all write down their opinions on 500 plus year old elves versus 50 plus year old humans. Ooh. But despite this tragic defeat, Stunk does what any human would do. Capitalism. He turns his passions into a profession by writing up reviews of all the places he goes to with some extra opinions from whoever decides to tag along, and judging by the huge fucking bag of gold the waitress reluctantly gives him, Cousin business is a boomer. <sighs> turning passion into a profession. What a novel concept. Anyways, that basically sums up the overall story. Man goes to get cheeks, man pays for cheeks, man writes up Yelp review on cheeks, man gets money to go get cheeks. Now as I said earlier, despite the explicit concept, this isn't hentai. It's actually serialized in the shonen magazine Dragon Age in Japan, alongside other titles like Tenchi Muyo, Gun X Clover, Ma Kenki, High School DXD, and I'm not making my argument any stronger, am I? It does not show the land down under, that's what I'm getting at. It comes damn near close, but in the end, the story's goal is just as much comedy as it is etchy. The premise is pretty awesome, but what really sells this series is the execution. The universe feels real with plenty of world building and expansion, Stunk goes to plenty of different locations to do his reviews, and with his comrades at his side, the results of their, uh, investigation, they're actually pretty interesting and varied, adding so much charm to the overall story. And not all the reviews are good ones, sometimes their bodies aren't compatible, sometimes they're a health risk, and sometimes the girls are just fucking racist. You even get a bit of a feminine perspective from the angel Krim, who, reluctantly, joins them on their ventures. It's a Hold on there, she's an angel. She has both. Krim is actually my favorite character, aside from the chill protagonist, because she has a completely different response to everything going on around her, but at the same time is not above it all. Plus, the unique aspects of being an angel make for comedy gold. <coughs> All this together makes for a fun and interesting while at the same time etchy adventure throughout this world of fantasy red light districts. And before I forget, they even address the question on why this world society even allows these districts in the first place. At first I thought, oh generic anime fantasy stuff, but nope, it's actually explained in the first chapter that succubus were uniquely allowed to make these sort of shops in the past, you know, to sustain themselves, hashtag succubus rights, but after hundreds of generations, Almost everyone has a little succubus in them now. So people care, but at the same time, no one cares. Anyways, kind of a throwaway explanation, but it fits right in with the chilled out atmosphere the story has. I'd like to say more, but again, it's a pretty short read, so I gotta leave something to be discovered. But if you like Monster Girls, fan service, 
and a little bit of thought-provoking analysis on both, this is really dope. I think series that go into more detail on Monster Girls than just, hey we put ears on some chicks, sometimes without removing the first pair, I think those series are always fun to read, so check it out when you can, and with that I will see you guys next time. Matane!